Hello everyone, we will talk today about uh, cardiac examination. As we all know, cardiac examination is divided into uh, general examination and local uh, examination. The aim of general examination is to pick a cause or a result of uh, the cardiac problem. This actually starts from the first look uh, to uh, the patient. Uh, if we have a patient, uh, for example, a tall and thin one, uh, we should uh, uh, suspect uh, something like Marfan syndrome, which is uh, linked with uh, aortic disease. Uh, also, if we have a patient with morbid obesity, we uh, might expect the presence of metab metabolic syndrome. Or if the patient is complaining of uh, dyspnea, we should suspect heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Also, the, the position uh, of our patient in the bed might give uh, a clue about the uh, uh, volume overload like this patient if we have a, a patient with orthopnea this might denote marked uh, volume overload then start with uh, a quick journey around uh, our patient starting from the hand uh, towards the head and neck then uh, down to uh, leg examination then abdominal and chest examination when we are looking uh, to the hand, starting with the dorsum of the hand, we uh, are searching for uh, clubbing, uh, like this one. Uh, clubbing in cardiology is related to one of three categories, either uh, cyanotic clubbing in patients with cyanotic heart disease, toxic clubbing in patients with endocarditis, or might be seen in a, a rare cardiac tumor which is called uh, myxoma. Also, we are searching for uh, signs of endocarditis, especially if uh, our patient is presenting with uh, fever, like splinter hemorrhage or oslar nodule, which is a painful nodule uh, in the bulb of uh, finger. Looking also for precipitating uh, uh, factors for uh, heart failure, like anemia, signs of anemia uh, varying from pallor to uh, uh, exaggerated finding like coelonychia or spawning of fingernail. Tremors uh, like in patients with uh, hyperthyroidism might be picked on uh, dorsum of hand examination. Then shifting to the balm of hand, searching also for other signs for endocarditis like Janeway spot, which is a, a painless uh, spot on the balm of the hand. Balmar erythema, which might be seen in some systemic disease like systemic lupus or liver cirrhosis. Then uh, step upward uh, for radial pulse uh, palpation. <coughs> we are commenting or assessing the pulse for first thing is uh, irregularities. Uh, if we have uh, uh, irregularity in the uh, pulsation, this might be either occasional irregularity that could be seen in patient with exercise tool, or might be marked irregularities that's seen in patient with atrial fibrillation. We can differentiate both by comparing the rate of uh, pulse at the radial artery and at the apex of the heart uh, by auscultation. If there is a deficit uh, between or a gap between the rate uh, of radial and apical more than 10, this called significant uh, pulse deficit, which seen in patient with atrial fibrillation. While in patient with extrasystole, this number will be less than 10. Then assessing the rate of uh, heartbeat per minute by assessing simply uh, the rate in 30 seconds then multiply by 2 for the sake of time. Assessing uh, pulse volume. Uh, to appreciate any abnormalities in the pulse, you should uh, palpate uh, a, normal, a lot of normal person to uh, become uh, uh, aware of uh, the, the sensation of uh, normal pulse volume, which is called average pulse volume. So then we, you, you should uh, appreciate a small or large uh, volume. Then uh, checking the pulse in both sides simultaneously. Uh, normally, uh, the pulsation is equal in both hands. What is the causes of unequal pulse? The most common cause is atrogenic, actually, following uh, radial puncture for uh, cardiac catheterization or uh, EBG sampling. Uh, the most dangerous cause is uh, aortic dissection, uh, which causes damping of uh, the flow to the left subclavian artery, causing an equal pulse on both sides. 
this should be uh, uh, might be uh, seen in about one third of patients with aortic dissection and this is life saving uh, uh, diagnosis uh, might be also caused by obstruction inside the artery itself uh, caused by atherosclerosis or compression outside by a cervical rib these are the causes of unequal pulse then assessing what is called the pulse character if we have a patient we are uh, 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 thinking is this pulse is normal or large uh, volume then we go for uh, shaking for water hammer pulse by baking uh, uh, the uh, arm of the patient like in this picture and trying to palpate uh, the brachial pulsation if the brachial pulsation are transmitted across the muscle bulk to your fingers then this should be uh, a patient with a, a large uh, pulse volume so this is called water hammer pulse uh, what is the causes of water hammer pulse a large uh, a hyperdynamic circulation like in anemia thyrotoxicosis pregnancy or pathological uh, cardiac problem like aortic regurgitation what are the other uh, characters that might be picked or seen um, in uh, patient uh, pulsation? Pulsus alt alternans, which is seen in advanced uh, left ventricular failure, where there is a delayed recovery of some muscle uh, fibers uh, of the weak cardiac muscle, leading to alternation of um, uh, a big pulse volume and a small pulse volume. And this actually uh, uh, the big one uh, occur when all uh, the cardiac muscle are uh, recovered and this one when there is uh, a leg on recovery of some uh, muscle fibers and uh, one of the prerequisite uh, uh, to uh, diagnose pulsus alternus is regular pulse if you have a patient with atrial fibrillation you should not comment on uh, pulsus alternus because the pulse volume is uh, actually variable due to variable failing of uh, the heart cycle due to uh, irregularity caused by atrial fibrillation second uh, pulse character uh, that's seen in patient to severe aortic stenosis is slow rising uh, small volume pulse this actually caused due to obstruction of the flow of blood outside of the heart this is caused by a valvular uh, lesion at the gate of uh, the heart uh, which is aorta so this uh, seen in patient with severe aortic stenosis called the pulsus tardus a -parus. Uh, third abnormality is pulsus bispherians that means that we have two uh, beaks of uh, pulse during systole uh, this is actually caused by interruption of systolic, systolic uh, flow by uh, obstruction um, which might be uh, fixed obstruction like patient with aortic stenosis or uh, patient with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy who had uh, dynamic uh, obstruction at the mid uh, systole when the muscle of the septum meeting uh, the outflow track of the heart finally pulsus paradoxus why it is called the paradoxus because normally uh, during inspiration the pulse volume decrease this uh, uh, this phenomena is normal but up to certain limits uh, a drop of blood pressure up to 10 millimeter mercury is normal but when uh, exaggeration of this normal drop uh, occur more than 10 millimeter mercury drop of blood pressure during uh, inspiration this uh, is pathological and might be seen uh, in patient where the feeling of the heart is uh, impaired due to compression from outside like in cardiac tamponade patient or due to mechanical obstruction in the pulmonary circulation like in patient with uh, pulmonary embolism this actually might be hard uh, to pick uh, during uh, just uh, pulse palpation while the patient is taking inspiration um, m m could be more appreciated uh, uh, using the cuff of uh, blood pressure and uh, uh, recording the systolic uh, blood pressure of the patient then asking the patient to take deep inspiration and then gradually deflating the cuff uh, and take uh, the record of 
uh, systolic blood pressure after deep inspiration if there is uh, a drop more than 10 millimeter mercury this actually diagnoses pulses paradoxes moving upward to uh, the arm where we measure uh, blood pressure the prerequisite uh, or uh, the important aspects of blood pressure measurement uh, is uh, to avoid conditions that could uh, elevate uh, blood pressure or activate the sympathetic nervous system and they give a false uh, reading. So the patient should uh, seated comfortably with back supported, arm supported at the level of the heart, pair with uh, not, not measuring over uh, closes, uh, the leg uh, uncrossed to avoid increase in the afterload of the heart. As we said, the arm at the level uh, of the heart level and the cup should be of adequate size uh, that should be at least 80% uh, of the arm circumference we are uh, talking about the bladder of the uh, cuff and uh, gradually deflating at a slow rate 1 to 2 millimeter mercury per second and then uh, getting uh, the first uh, cortical sound which is uh, the systolic blood pressure where uh, the first uh, sound is heard uh, by auscultation of the brachial artery while deflating the cuff and recording uh, the last uh, sound which is the fifth uh, for the cortical sound uh, which uh, is denoting the systolic uh, blood pressure with one exception in patients with hyperdynamic circulation or uh, severe aortic regurgitation uh, we might uh, still hearing uh, uh, a pulsation uh, till uh, the the, uh, the degree of zero um, on uh, the sphingomanometer. So at this condition, we take the force sound, which is muffling of the uh, uh, heart uh, beat during uh, auscultation instead of disappearance of uh, the beat, which is the fifth sound. As we said uh, before, uh, the patient uh, should be relaxed, no smoking at the, uh, at the previous 30 minutes because nicotine might cause uh, uh, up to 10 to 15 degree elevation of the uh, blood pressure due to uh, endothelial dysfunction, vasoconstriction and the activation of sympathetic nervous system. Urine retention is one of the most common causes of uh, pseudo uh, hypertension because if the patient has uh, marked retention, this might cause high elevation of systolic blood pressure up to 30 or 40 degrees uh, above uh, the normal. So the patient should have his bladder empty before uh, taking uh, a record. We should also take uh, uh, three uh, different me measurement with a couple of minutes between each other and taking the average of the last uh, two reading uh, for uh, recording of blood pressure and for the first time uh, we should record uh, on both hands and if there is a difference between both hands we take the higher one finally if we have a patient uh, with suspected orthostatic hypotension this meaning that the patient complaining of dizziness or uh, 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 some breathing could be or something like that on standing uh, this actually seen in patient uh, in old age uh, uh, or diabetic uh, neuropathy patient we should record uh, blood pressure uh, again after standing for three minutes uh, to exclude orthostatic uh, hypotension uh, which is defined by drop of blood pressure more than uh, 20 in systole or 10 millimeter mercury for uh, diastole so what is normal what is normal while standing normally when we stand the systolic blood pressure drop but less than uh, 20 millimeter mercury and the diastolic uh, blood pressure either remains the same or uh, become uh, higher so drop of the systolic blood pressure is uh, pathological then moving upward towards this head and neck starting with head examination uh, uh, looking around the eye for xanthelasma, uh, which denote hypercholesterolemia. Looking uh, at conjunctiva for pallor, uh, denoting anemia, jaundice, might be seen in uh, uh, hepatic congestion in our cardiac patients. Then moving to mouth, uh, searching for uh, central cyanosis, uh, seen in patients with cyanotic heart disease. 
uh, ulcers, uh, painless ulcer like systemic lupus patient or painful one in base patient. Uh, telangiectasia also might be seen in patient with uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia which uh, uh, might be associated with uh, lung fistula. Macroglosia might be seen in patient with amyloidosis, myxedema or acromegaly. Then finally the checks of patient uh, uh, for malar rash that might be seen in patient with rheumatic mitral stenosis, pulmonary hypertension or systemic lupus erythematosus. Then moving to the neck, uh, a nice piece of uh, information that uh, the giraffe has uh, a valve in their internal jugular vein to uh, prevent uh, drop of the uh, column, this large column uh, of blood while uh, the giraffe is uh, 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 getting their head uh, downward while eating. So <coughs> we can't measure uh, the uh, jugular venous pressure uh, on GIRF. But uh, fortunately, uh, in human, we don't have uh, any valve in this uh, area between the internal jugular vein and the right atrium. So measuring the column of blood in the internal jugular vein might give a, a data about the volume status or the right atrial uh, pressure. What is the normal right atrial pressure? Normally it is less than 8 uh, centimeter water. So <coughs> Uh, if we know a piece of information that uh, uh, the distance between the mid level of right atrium and sternal angle is about 5 cm so normally uh, uh, the uh, elevation of the column of the blood in the internal jugular vein above this point at the sternal angle should be less than 3 cm because 3 plus 5 is 8 cm which is the upper cutoff point of right atrial pressure so elevated column of blood in the internal jugular vein while the patient is seated in 45 degree above 3 cm is abnormal and denoting marked or uh, more uh, right atrial pressure and uh, volume overload so how to measure uh, the uh, jugular venous pressure while the patient is seated 45 degree to uh, get the mid level of right atrium at this point uh, from the sternal angle which is uh, about half centimeter and then uh, taking two uh, ruler one uh, perpendicular to the sternal angle and one horizontal uh, to the uh, upper level of the seen uh, uh, jugular venous pulsation <coughs> then uh, taking uh, the record if uh, it is more than three centimeters this is uh, as we said uh, abnormal and this is the first to comment on jugular venous pressure is it elevated or not a second important point uh, which is more simple uh, uh, maneuver to uh, measure jugular venous pressure is getting the patient sitting 90 degree then any uh, elevation of uh, jugular venous pressure above the clavicle is abnormal because uh, at setting level, the uh, distance between the clavicle and the mid right atrial uh, level is 8 cm water. So, any elevation above the clavicle is uh, uh, denoting elevation of jugular venous pressure more than 8, which is pathological. This is the second more simpler uh, method. So, what is the causes of uh, elevated jugular venous pressure or congested neck veins? This is actually divided into uh, uh, pulsating and non-pulsating neck vein. Pulsating meaning that the jugular vein is still connected uh, to uh, the right atrium without any obstruction in this way. This actually is the most common uh, cause. Uh, pulsating neck veins are uh, right side heart failure, uh, impaired uh, filling of uh, the right atrium due to compression from outside by precardial effusion or by constricted pericarditis. On the other hand, the causes of numbal setting neck vein is obstruction, obstruction of the uh, internal jugular venous pressure, uh, uh, internal jugular vein connection with the right atrial. This is uh, caused by uh, compression from outside, like in mediastinal syndrome, Banco's tumor, or obstruction inside, like thrombosis of superior uh, vena cava. 
This actually might be seen in patients with indwelling uh, uh, jugular venous uh, catheter, uh, either for uh, uh, central line or dialysis. So the first comment is the jugular venous pressure is elevated or not, and we uh, know how to measure now, and the differential diagnosis of elevated uh, jugular venous pressure. Second point is commenting in the waveform of jugular vein. As we said, jugular vein uh, uh, is um, a mirror of the uh, pressure inside uh, the right atrium. So we should know uh, what is the normal waveform or normal uh, pressure changes that occur inside the right atrium. Starting at this point, the Y wave, Y uh, for emptying. Uh, so the Y wave occur during uh, the uh, uh, filling of uh, right ventricle from uh, the right atrium after the tricuspid valve open. And this account for 70% of uh, filling of the uh, right ventricle. This causes uh, the opening of tricuspid valve and passive filling uh, or emptying of the right atrium into right ventricle causing this negative uh, deflection on the jugular venous uh, waveform called Y wave. The remaining volume inside the atrium uh, enters the uh, ventricle by force of atrial contraction at late uh, diastole. So the A wave for atrial systole or atrial contraction, which is the most prominent positive wave in the uh, jugular waveform. Then after uh, kicking uh, the last drops of blood inside the right atrium into the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve closed, causing a deflection caused C wave. This is not important. Then the atrium starts to relax and uh, uh, the tricuspid uh, annulus become uh, pulled downward by uh, ventricular systole, causing a negative uh, pressure changes inside the right atrium which is called the X wave so normally during systole the neck vein waveform is negative which is X wave so uh, can we see this waveform um, uh, in uh, uh, regular uh, uh, practice actually uh, the eye will uh, appreciate the most positive one and the most negative one which is the A wave and X wave how to differentiate uh, uh, these waves uh, by timing uh, with uh, the carotid pulsation so if we have a positive wave just before the uh, feeling of carotid pulsation or systole the positive wave before systole is the A wave and the negative wave with systole is the X wave this is the, uh, the clue for understanding the waveform of jugular venous pressure due, during examination. We should know two important points uh, in the comment in uh, jugular venous uh, waveform. First one is there is uh, uh, normally uh, systolic collapse of jugular venous waveform, the X wave, due to atrial relaxation and pulling down the uh, tricuspid annulus toward the ventricle uh, or suction effect caused by ventricular systole. So if we have a patient with uh, abnormality like uh, systolic expansion of neck vein, this is abnormal. And the causes of this either uh, in incompetence of the tricuspid valve, which is a valve between the atria and the ventricle, causing a regurge of blood during this phase and a positive wave here this causes systolic expansion with this tricuspid regurgitation or the patient has uh, electric abnormalities that lead to absence of atrial contraction and relaxation which is atrial fibrillation and this is the most common causes of systolic expansion of neck veins uh, the second abnormality that might be big but a little bit difficult is uh, to see uh, augmented positive uh, A wave and as we said how we know this is A wave this is a positive wave just before feeling the uh, pulse of the patient systolic pulse of the patient 
this could be seen in patient who has a uh, pressure overload uh, over uh, the atrium or the right atrium of the heart as in patient with obstruction in the tricuspid valve tricuspid stenosis at the pulmonary level pulmonary stenosis or uh, raised pressure in the pulmonary circulation pulmonary hypertension this is the causes of giant a waves and finally uh, the abnormality that uh, could be seen is deep Y descent normally as we said we appreciate only the most positive wave which is a wave and the most negative wave which is x wave but if we see double negative waves uh, which is x and y y become deep and seen as well as uh, x wave this occurring patient with constricted pericarditis what is the cause of deep y descent because uh, this patient has limited filling of the uh, right ventricle during the very early period of diastole as after this point the ventricle can't receive blood due to uh, a mechanical uh, uh, obstruction or compression from outside by the tough uh, pericardium so uh, uh, it acclimatizes with this by uh, early rapid filling uh, between atria and, and the ventricle causing a deep Y uh, descent and finally uh, the final uh, thing that we should comment after we comment uh, uh, on the waveform is asking the patient to take deep inspiration what is uh, uh, normally occur during deep inspiration uh, this create a negative intrathoracic pressure that causes suction of any blood inside the jugular veins into the right atrium so what is abnormal is inspiratory uh, expansion of the neck veins when you ask the patient to take inspiration then uh, you see this uh, sign this is called cosmol sign or systolic expansion or, uh, sorry or uh, inspiratory expansion of the uh, neck vein this actually occur in patient who have limited receiving uh, capacity of the right side of the heart uh, due to uh, mechanical uh, uh, compression like in patient with tamponade, constricted pericarditis or uh, obstruction inside the pulmonary circulation in pulmonary embolism these are the causes of uh, inspiratory uh, expansion of the neck veins so uh, to summarize uh, what we said first thing is looking at the uh, jugular venous pressure at 45 degree if it is elevated more than three centimeters then uh, we call it raised jugular venous pressure and uh, the second thing, thing is commenting in the waveform the most important thing is uh, the patient has systolic uh, collapse or systolic expansion if he has abnormal uh, uh, systolic expansion of the neck vein this might be caused by tricuspid regurgitation or atrial fibrillation and the third document is uh, after asking the patient to take deep inspiration is there is inspiratory collapse which is normal or if the patient has inspiratory uh, expansion of neck veins which is called cosmol sign that occur in patient with constricted pericarditis tamponade or pulmonary embolism then moving to other structure in the neck after assessing uh, jugular venous pressure assessing the carotid pulsation using the thumb of the hand uh, the abnormality that could be picked at the carotid uh, pulse uh, is uh, getting a thrill uh, or tickling sensation in your uh, finger this is called by obstruction inside the carotid itself as in patient with carotid stenosis or might be transmitted from obstruction at the gateway of the uh, heart which is aortic valve caused by aortic stenosis we should also uh, 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 we might also find a prominent or strong uh, carotid pulsation that might be seen uh, without uh, even palpating the pulse this is called corrigan sign which is seen in patient who, who have uh, uh, aortic severe aortic regurgitation Another sign of severe aortic regurgitation is the MOC sign, which is nodding of the head uh, during uh, with its with, with each, uh, heart pulsation due to also uh, high volume uh, output caused by uh, severe aortic regurgitation. 
the last thing is commenting on any thyroid swelling or lymph node then moving downwards towards the leg first thing is palpating uh, dorsalis pedis anterior tibial uh, artery posterior tibial artery and uh, popliteal femoral arteries uh, dorsalis pedis might be uh, not felt in about uh, 15 to 20 percent of uh, patient but uh, we should then assess the anterior tibial artery if uh, the anterior tibial artery is felt this is okay if not felt this is uh, might be pathological then assessing uh, the presence of any edema by uh, pressing uh, over a bone prominence like chain of tibia uh, uh, for 10 seconds if we have a bedding edema which is the most common uh, type of edema in cardiac patient this denotes volume overload the presence of lower limb edema denotes at least 4 to 5 liter uh, of volume overload in the patient other causes of uh, pitting edema is due to low oncotic pr uh, pressure uh, caused by uh, hypoalbuminemia. Uh, the extremely rare uh, finding is non pitting edema, which is uh, usually caused by lymph edema. The other thing to assess is uh, for uh, scars in the lower limb that uh, caused by harvesting the, uh, the saphenous vein used in cardiac uh, bypass surgery or cabbage surgery this might give a clue if we have a patient who gave a history of open heart and he didn't recall the type of surgery it is, is it a valve surgery or uh, cabbage surgery the finding of this uh, scar give a clue that this patient has a cabbage operation and then moving upward towards the abdomen the most important uh, couple of things on uh, abdominal examination is uh, palpation for uh, hepatomegaly and percussion uh, for uh, ascites the cardiac causes of uh, hepatomegaly or ascites are mainly related to raised right-sided uh, pressure caused by right-sided heart failure tricuspid regurgitation or stenosis and pericardial disease and here is an important uh, clinical uh, point if the patient give uh, the sequence of uh, 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 marked abdominal distension followed by lower limb edema this is called ascites precox that means ascites occur uh, before uh, lower limb edema this uh, this is a little bit pathognomonic for uh, pericardial uh, disease or tricuspid stenosis then moving uh, to uh, the back of uh, the chest for auscultation of uh, damaged air entry that might be seen in effusion uh, crackles uh, caused by fluid inside the alveolar uh, space caused by uh, congestion and there is an uh, important point to differentiate between crackle uh, caused by congestion and that caused by fibrosis crackles caused by congestion are early and uh, mid inspiratory uh, crackles because the fluid is already inside the alveoli and uh, the air entering with inspiration causing uh, this crackles uh, from the first scratch of uh, inspiration process but in patient with fibrosis uh, uh, the crepitation sound is here the when that tensile capacity of alveoli is reached at the uh, end of inspiration which is late inspiratory one the third uh, abnormality that might be heard is bubbling crepitation denoting marked volume uh, inside uh, the alveoli in patient with pulmonary edema and last thing is uh, cardiac asthma or wheezes uh, this is important thing that uh, you should put in your differential diagnosis uh, uh, when hearing uh, uh, a widespread wheezes across the chest that uh, congestion of the airway might cause uh, also wheezes like that of bronchial asthma or airway disease patient so uh, the presence of wheezes does not mean 100 percent that this patient has only a chest disease this also might could be heard in patient with uh, heart failure and finally the presence of bronchial breathing in patient with uh, a complication like pneumonia abscess or pulmonary infarction then moving towards this local cardiac examination 
as we said on the general examination we are uh, uh, looking for any sign or a complication of the cardiac problem uh, on other system in cardiac examination the main aim is uh, uh, knowing which chamber is enlarged this could be uh, get by palpation and which valve is affected by auscultation starting with a quick look uh, inspection of uh, pericardium for any bulge that uh, seen in patient with congenital heart disease because uh, uh, cardiomegaly in uh, early life of uh, patient with congenital heart disease while the chest bone is still uh, uh, not uh, ossified leading to a bulge uh, that persists uh, on uh, this type of patient called precordial bulge scar uh, the classic scar uh, is a median sternatum scar seen in uh, all type of valve replacement or uh, cabbage uh, surgery and nowadays we have in the modern era uh, a procedure called the minimally invasive procedure for uh, uh, valve replacement usually for uh, uh, scar blue the right uh, navel or uh, for cabbage uh, called the mid cap uh, seen uh, blue the left uh, navel Dilated veins across the chest might be also seen in patient with superior vena cava obstruction like bronchogenic carcinoma with SVZ uh, compression. Then moving for cardiac palpation, starting with localization of the apex. Normal apex is in the fifth intercostal space at mid clavicular line. We should know the orientation, normal orientation of the uh, right ventricle and left ventricle. Normally the right ventricle is anterior and it is a little bit in a horizontal uh, uh, level while the left ventricle is posterior to it and taking vertical orientation. So if we have the apex shifted outward this means most probably right ventricular enlargement and we have the patient with uh, downward shifted apex in the sixth space or seventh space this denote left ventricular enlargement and this is the first thing getting uh, by uh, apex localization second thing is uh, getting the character like uh, uh, when we are palpating the radial pulse and uh, checking for the character of the uh, pulse also when palpating the apex we are uh, checking for the character of the apex hitting our hand if we have what is called the heaving apex that means that the pulse is hitting our finger and become sustainedly uh, uh, touching our finger that means this heart is strangulating or straining against an obstruction this seen in patient with uh, aortic stenosis if we have uh, a thrusting apex or hyperdynamic apex this actually occur in patient with marked volume overload like in patient with aortic recurge or mitral recurge if we have um, uh, something like a tap uh, uh, on our fingers that is uh, okay uh, synchronous with uh, uh, the stolic pulse or carotid pulse this actually uh, uh, palpated s1 Palpated S1 occur on tough uh, fibrosis of uh, the mitral leaflet causing a tapping uh, uh, character while pulsating uh, the apex this tapping apex occur in patient with mitral stenosis the second thing is palpating uh, the left parasternal area by the base of the palm of the hand as we see here and just said that the right ventricle is anterior left ventricle is posterior so if our patient have marked rv uh, uh, problem uh, either enlargement or uh, uh, hypertrophy this right ventricle might uh, heating our uh, palm of the hand during uh, systole this is called left parasternal heaving denoting uh, marked rv uh, either enlargement or hypertrophy then uh, palpating the same area left parasternal area by the head of metacarpal bone because the head of bone um, is the most points that appreciate uh, a thrill uh, 
sound this occur in patient with uh, ventricular receptor defect a left parasternal cell occur in patient with VST then moving upward for uh, palpating pulmonary and aortic pulsation in the second intercostal space on the left side pulmonary on the right side the aorta using the tip of finger as seen here if we uh, appreciate marked pulmonary pulsation this denoting uh, hypertension and uh, or dilatation in this uh, site so in pulmonary site uh, denoting pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary artery dilatation and same in the aortic area and again palpating this area with the head of metacarpal bone for a thrill a thrill in the pulmonary area usually caused by obstruction that is pulmonary stenosis and the aortic area caused by aortic stenosis the final site uh, to palpate uh, pulsation is the uh, epigastre if we uh, palpate uh, a marked pulsation at this area this actually might be normal in patient uh, with thin body habitus uh, we are feeling uh, the aortic pulsation but uh, the abnormality is to get this pulsation on the tip of your finger that is actually coming from this area from the right ventricle and if, if if you feel it at the upper border of your hand coming from this direction this denoting uh, hepatic uh, source of this pulsation if you feel it at the uh, palm of your hand uh, coming from just uh, behind which is usually of aortic origin as we said in patient with uh, uh, same body habits then moving to the most important thing cardiac examination which is uh, cardiac auscultation as we said the aim of cardiac auscultation is to uh, give uh, get a clue about which valve is affected as we know uh, we have four uh, valves two between the atria and ventricle mitral valve and tricuspid valve and two between ventricles and the great vessels pulmonary valve and the aortic valve the site of auscultation of this uh, valve actually is a little bit uh, uh, away from the actual anatomical site this is related to sound uh, uh, transmission uh, and uh, some physics so where to auscultate each valve the mitral valve is placed here over the apex which is at the fifth uh, intercostal resistant clavicular line in normal person tricuspid valve is here over the left lower sternal edge the pulmonary valve is here at the second intercostal space at left side and the aortic uh, valve obstruction is based here over uh, the first aortic area which is uh, at the second intercostal space at the right side of sternum while regurgitation uh, aortic regurgitation lesion is here over what is called the second aortic area which uh, uh, just below the pulmonary area at the third space uh, at the left side of the sternum the remaining space is the fourth space here between the tricuspid and the uh, second aortic area where we uh, paste here uh, a murmur of uh, ventricular septal defect so we are auscultating uh, on a z shaped manner starting at the apex moving to tricuspid area upward uh, uh, to uh, fourth space for VSD and uh, third space for aortic regurgitation pulmonary area and first aortic area so uh, what we are commenting uh, on during uh, auscultation uh, first thing is hard sound hard sound is either first hard sound that is called by uh, closure of the atrioventricular valves tricuspid and mitral valve and second harsh sound that is caused by closure of the uh, pulmonary and aortic valve the comment is the sound uh, accentuated or muffled or there is a splitting between its two component as we will discuss the second thing we are commenting during auscultation is abnormal sounds which is murmur to get a clue about uh, the origin of this murmur uh, we should comment where we hear this murmur, the site of murmur and when we hear this murmur, the time uh, during systole or diastole and uh, where this uh, murmur radiate and is there is anything that increase or decrease it all this give a clue about which valve is affected 
lossing is additional sound we will discuss it in the coming slides so back to uh, uh, the first thing which is harsh sound as we just said we have first harsh sound that uh, we comment uh, on it over uh, the origin of this sound which is mitra and tricuspid closure so we are commenting on first harsh sound at the apex of the heart mitral area and at the left sternal edge over the tricuspid area this is where we comment on first harsh sound first harsh sound as we said caused by closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve during systole so what uh, uh, are the uh, abnormalities that uh, could be heard uh, uh, during uh, S1 auscultation as we said either accentuation or muffled uh, first heart sound accentuation of the first heart sound caused by either uh, a problem on the leaflet uh, that become more uh, rigid uh, causing accentuation of the meeting of these leaflets uh, together uh, like in patient with uh, rheumatic mitral uh, stenosis or where uh, the uh, force of closure is uh, rapid or forceful this occur on high heart rate on tachycardia so tachycardia is the most common cause of accentuated first heart sound this actually related to some physics of uh, the tension on the cordy of uh, the valve during the tachycardia and the volume inside the uh, ventricle uh, during the closure of uh, mitral and tricuspid valves so to summarize the causes of accentuation of the first heart sound is either a disease on the leaflet itself like in patient with mitral stenosis or related to the uh, force of closure uh, uh, that increased in tachycardia on the other hand the causes of muffled s1 is related to uh, a male cohabitation between the leaflets itself that occur in patient with mitral regurgitation or uh, decreased force of closure that occur in patient with uh, bradycardia so mitral stenosis and tachycardia causes accentuated first heart sound mitral regurgitation bradycardia causes muffled first heart sound then moving towards the second heart sound second heart sound as we said uh, caused by closure of the pulmonary and aortic valve the mechanism of closure of uh, this valve are uh, by the column of blood inside the pulmonary or the aorta during uh, the end of systole where the blood pressure is around 120 in the uh, aorta this column of uh, blood causing meeting of both uh, uh, or the three cusps of aorta and the closure of these uh, valves so what we are expecting uh, the causes of accentuated uh, the second harsh sound if we are talking about the aortic uh, component of the second heart sound while auscultating uh, uh, the aortic area this is called by high closing pressure that might be seen in patient with simply systemic hypertension hypertensive patient and what are the causes of muffled this sound this caused by any disease of the leaflet either regurgitation or stenosis that limit the meeting of this uh, leaflet so either uh, any aortic disease aortic stenosis aortic recurge caused muffled aortic component of the second heart sound and we when we are auscultating the second heart sound over the pulmonary uh, area then uh, uh, similarly uh, high closing pressure caused by pulmonary hypertension causing accentuated uh, pulmonary component of the second heart sound while any disease in the valve itself like regurg or stenosis pulmonary regurg or stenosis causing muffled second heart sound an important thing uh, where we are commenting in this component the pulmonary and the aortic as we know that the closing pressure of the aortic valve is very high around 120 millimeter mercury so it is best heard over the aortic area but it's still here over the pulmonary area while the closing pressure of the pulmonary valve is around 25 millimeter mercury so it is only heard over the pulmonary area it is not transmitted anywhere so 
if we are uh, hearing the second harsh sound over the pulmonary area then we compare it with the aortic area if it is the same intensity or higher intensity than uh, uh, that heard over the aortic area this means accentuated pulmonary component if it is uh, uh, normally as we said it is heard but uh, the second R sound is a little bit less in intensity than that of aortic area because the difference of closing pressure here around 120 and here is around 25 so normally uh, second R sound over the pulmonary area is a little bit uh, less uh, intensity than that of aortic if it is uh, uh, the same or higher, this means accentuated pulmonary component that occur in patient with pulmonary hypertension. How to time this harsh sound? Simply, S1 occur with uh, while we uh, palpating the carotid pulse uh, simultaneously. S1 with the upstroke of carotid pulse, while S2 on the opposite side when we are not feeling the carotid pulse. This how to differentiate between S1 and S2 and what are the differential of accentuated or muffled uh, this sound and how to uh, uh, comment on the second R sound pulmonary and aortic uh, component. Then moving to uh, something called splitting of uh, heart sound. As we said, uh, the uh, H heart sound is a form of two components but due to close uh, uh, timing between the mitral and tricuspid closure it is a little bit difficult to appreciate any splitting on the first heart sound on the other hand similarly second heart sound is very difficult to uh, uh, appreciate uh, the, the difference or the, the timing time gap between the two component aortic or pulmonary so what is happening uh, 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 that might get this splitting more pronounced normally during inspiration the, the systemic uh, venous return to the right side of the heart increased causing delayed closure of the pulmonary valve or delayed b2 as we see here on the other hand during expiration there is increase on the pulmonary venous return to the left side causing delayed aortic valve closure this is the fact that we should know at first to understand the abnormalities that uh, could be heard the first abnormality could be heard is wide splitting of s2 that mean a wide gap between the aortic valve and the uh, pulmonary valve during inspiration as we said during inspiration there is a little bit delay of p2 but hardly appreciated when it become uh, very clear uh, while putting the uh, cystoscope over the pulmonary area and asking the patient to take inspiration we hear a wide gap between uh, the second heart sound component aortic and the pulmonary component is called white splitting white splitting uh, caused by delayed uh, pulmonary valve closure what are the causes of delayed closure of the uh, pulmonary valve? It is actually related to a uh, mechanical problem in the valve itself, so like pulmonary stenosis, or mechanical problem in the uh, ventricle itself, poor pumping uh, uh, capacity, like in patient with right ventricular failure, or electrical uh, delay of the right ventricular activation in patient with right bundle branch block. This is the causes of wide splitting and where to comment on splitting actually on pulmonary area because as we just said on the previous slide that the pulmonary component of s2 is uh, uh, created by the closing pressure of 25 millimeter mercury so it is heard only over the pulmonary area so if we want a single area where we can hear the both the pulmonary uh, uh, valve closure and the transmitted uh, uh, sound of aortic valve closure this will be the pulmonary area so we put the uh, stethoscope over the pulmonary area asking the patient to take inspiration if we appreciate uh, a wide uh, time gap between uh, the two components this might denote as we said wide splitting caused by pulmonary stenosis RV failure or right bundle branch block second abnormality is wide fixed splitting this causes 
by uh, uh, atrial septal defect this is mnemonic for atrial septal defect how to understand this uh, fixed splitting during inspiration there is increase on the venous uh, return on the right side causing delayed uh, pulmonary uh, valve closure on inspiration what causes wide splitting during expiration? During expiration, there is increase in the pulmonary venous return on the left atrium, which is actually shunted across the septal defect to the right side, causing also delayed pulmonary closure during expiration. So uh, there is wide splitting that is fixed during inspiration and expiration. This is pseudomonic for atrial septal defect. The last thing is called paradoxical splitting. What is paradoxical splitting? This means that uh, splitting disappear while inspiration and appear on expiration. What causes uh, 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 paradoxical splitting or splitting with expiration? It's actually caused by delayed aortic valve closure. Similarly, it might be caused by mechanical problem on the uh, aortic valve itself, aortic stenosis mechanical uh, pump failure of the pumping uh, uh, ventricle which is the left ventricle in patient with left ventricle failure delayed electrical activation of the left ventricle as in patient with left bundle branch block so uh, if we ask the patient uh, to take inspiration then uh, the splitting disappear this is called the paradoxical splitting caused by uh, aortic stenosis LV failure or left bundle branch block then moving toward this uh, abnormal sound or murmurs as we said before we should uh, uh, comment on the site we where we hear this abnormal sound and time this sound while it systole or uh, diastole by palpating simultaneously the carotid pulsation while auscultating the patient as we said before, we move from the mitral area to tricuspid area, uh, left parasternal fourth space, third space for second aortic area, pulmonary area, and finally first aortic area. Starting at the apex, if we hear a murmur over the apex, this means this uh, origin of this uh, uh, murmur, if this uh, uh, highest intensity of this murmur uh, is on this area, this means the origin is on the mitral valve then timing with uh, carotid pulsation if this occur during systole this caused by uh, regurgitation of blood during systole called mitral regurgitation if this murmur here during uh, diastole or during the opening of a mitral valve this means that there is a mechanical obstruction of uh, flow of blood from left atria to left ventricle during opening of the valve or diastole this is called by mitral stenosis so we hear a murmur over the apex then we time this murmur with carotid pulsation systolic one is caused by mitral regurgitation diastolic one caused by mitral stenosis the same on the tricuspid area systolic murmur caused by tricuspid regurgitation and diastolic one caused by obstruction or tricuspid stenosis how to differentiate between uh, tricuspid regurg and mitral regurg simply any right sided murmur increase by increased flow across the right side what normally increase the flow across the right side is taking deep inspiration which is called carabello sign if the murmur increase with inspiration this is pseudomonic for tricuspid uh, or right side disease tricuspid regurgitation then uh, moving uh, to the uh, pulmonary area a murmur uh, here during ejection of blood during systole ejection of blood from the right ventricle to the pulmonary circulation is called by obstruction obstruction mean pulmonary stenosis so a systolic murmur would be caused by pulmonary stenosis the systolic murmur will uh, would be caused by pulmonary regurgitation again how to make sure this murmur uh, is from uh, the pulmonary side by taking inspiration if the murmur increases with inspiration this is pseudomonic for the right side uh, uh, valve lesion 
then uh, to the aortic area the first aortic area if we have again a systolic murmur which occurred during ejection of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta this mean mechanical obstruction on the gateway valve which is aortic valve or aortic stenosis then hearing the second aortic area which is just below the pulmonary area at the third space left intercostal uh, 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 left side of the sternum this murmur during diastole this means that there is uh, a regurge of blood during uh, uh, diastole while the, uh, the aortic valve normally uh, become closed to avoid uh, uh, return of blood a disease of valves that cause regurge of blood during diastole is actually aortic regurgitation and then uh, uh, extra murmurs that could be heard uh, in congenital patient uh, a murmur of BDA or beta inductors arteriosus which is a communication between the uh, aortic uh, aorta and the uh, pulmonary uh, artery because of the blood pressure inside the, uh, the aorta uh, during systole and during diastole is always higher than that of the pulmonary so this murmur is actually continuous during systole and diastole so a continuous what's called the machinery murmur uh, on the uh, infraclavicular lesion is basognomonic for uh, beta inductus artery use last thing is continuous uh, is harsh uh, band systolic murmur over the force space which is uh, the best side to hear a uh, uh, murmur of ventricular septal defect so as we uh, as we said we are uh, auscultating in uh, z shape manner mitral tricuspid uh, pulmonary aorta then if we hear uh, a murmur we comment on where we hear this murmur and then we time the murmur with the carotid pulse if the murmur uh, heard with pulsation this means this is a systolic murmur a systolic murmur over the mitral or tricuspid valve is a regurgent murmur uh, on the opposite side at the pulmonary or aortic valve a systolic murmur is caused by stenosis then if we hear a murmur with uh, diastole or uh, as we said while palpating the carotid pulsation uh, not hitting our finger in diastole we hear a murmur diastolic one the stolic murmur over a mitral or tricuspid valve caused by stenosis the stolic murmur over pulmonary or aortic valve caused by regurgitation another important thing is commenting on uh, the uh, transmission or propagation of the murmur uh, the most important thing is the mitral and the aortic valve normally the mitral regurgitation uh, propagated towards the axilla and the aortic uh, stenosis propagated either to the neck or towards the uh, apex this is the most common site of uh, murmur uh, propagation last thing is commenting in the intensity of the murmur a murmur uh, to simplify this uh, uh, issue if we uh, have a murmur uh, and uh, a thrill filled over uh, the site of the murmur this is uh, automatically a grade 4 plus if no thrill this is uh, most probably grade 3 then moving to uh, extra heart sound what is the extra heart sound that could be heard an extra heart sound that heard during the passive feeling of uh, ventricle in early diastole uh, is called s3 s3 denoting increased volume of blood during this passive filling uh, phase what causes increased volume hyperdynamic circulation like cyrotoxicosis anemia uh, volume overload caused by mitral regurgitation or dilated uh, ventricle uh, uh, with increased volume inside uh, like in patient with cardiomyopathy the hitting uh, of the, the increased uh, flow of blood during the early filling phase of diastole is called s3 
on the other hand uh, exaggerated force of atrial contraction during uh, the late uh, filling of uh, ventricle during diastole is called S4 this is called by a stiff ventricle leading to decrease compliance of the ventricle and increase the force of atrial contraction that become uh, uh, high enough to be heard causing S4 this stiff ventricle might be caused by uh, ventricular hypertrophy uh, like in patients with hypertension or aortic stenosis or in uh, ischemic uh, myocardium how to differentiate this extra heart sound S3 is early diastolic so it is close to S2 so uh, uh, if the patient have S3 this could be like this while on the other hand S4 is late diastole close to S1 so uh, should be heard uh, like this if this extra sound is associated with uh, tachycardia this is called gallop uh, uh, S3 with tachycardia caused, uh, called S3 gallop and uh, seen uh, mostly in patients with uh, decompensated heart failure if S4 is associated with uh, tachycardia is called S4 gallop then moving to other extra sounds that could be heard uh, 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 a, noise is a noise that heard uh, during the opening of mitral valve uh, in early diastole this is actually caused by marked uh, fibrosis of the leaflet seen in patient with uh, mitral stenosis the uh, tension uh, on this uh, uh, fibrotic uh, leaflet cause uh, a sound called opening snap this opening snap is heard uh, like a click just before the mitral stenosis member the other abnormal sound is ejection click ejection click is heard over the pulmonary or aortic area in patient with congenital aortic or pulmonary stenosis just before the murmur of uh, stenosis this caused by pathognomonic uh, dooming of uh, leaflets occur in congenital type of uh, stenosis the systolic dooming uh, uh, of this leaflet due to uh, tension over it during the history causing a click sound just before the ejection phase this is called ejection click finally uh, what is called pericardial rub if uh, we put the stethoscope over the left parasternal area or the base of the heart and we hear uh, like a friction sound like two paper uh, friction over uh, uh, itself this is called pericardial rub how to differentiate between pericardial rub and a pleural rub uh, actually uh, the heart is continuously beating so uh, this rub sound is continuous regardless inspiration or expiration while if we ask the patient to stop uh, respiration for a while and uh, this sound disappear this means this is of uh, uh, plural origin this is how to differentiate between plural and pericardial group how is this rub sound is here because normally there is uh, uh, two layers of pericardium visceral and pericardial layer and there is a little amount of fluid uh, uh, allow a smooth uh, a movement of the heart uh, uh, during each uh, beat if this uh, layers become inflamed become tough then friction between this post layer uh, cause uh, the rub sound of uh, pericardial rub that here the patient was inflammation on this sac or pericarditis moving to the last thing of, the, of our lecture which is a prosthetic valve prosthetic uh, valve patient uh, uh, who underwent valve replacement uh, there is are uh, two main uh, categories of or types of uh, heart valve uh, tissue valve and mechanical valve the tissue valve either uh, surgical one or transcontinuous one which is a TAVI valve uh, usual uh, uh, auscultation is as usual first and second heart sound are heard as normal on the other hand if the patient has valve replacement to the mechanical valve the closure sound of this valve cause uh, a ticking sound or a clicking sound like a clock one 
this closure uh, sound uh, is uh, heard uh, with systole in mitral position causing metallic click uh, synchronous with carotid pulsation during timing it's called S1 metallic S1 and if the patient have a vortic valve replacement this will be uh, a diastolic sound uh, or diastolic click called metallic uh, S2 so uh, this click sound is actually better propagated across bone so it is best heard over the uh, lower uh, part of the sternum while the patient is sitting uh, this uh, the maximum site of hearing of mechanical valve click even better here than uh, the original site of the valve uh, like uh, uh, mitral or aorta so normally we hear this click with systole in mitral position and with diastole uh, in aortic position what is abnormal if we don't hear this click especially if the patient presenting with acute heart failure and he is not compliant to anticoagulation then we are thinking of a cardiac emergency which is a stuck valve or thrombosed valve so the click is not heard the second pathological thing is any regurgitation murmur over the valve so if we hear a mitral regurgitation murmur in a patient with metallic mitral processes this means that there is a leakage around the valve itself which is pathological similarly if we hear aortic regurgitation murmur in patient with aortic valve processes this is also pathological denoting a leakage of blood around the process on the other hand uh, uh, a stenotic murmur might be heard uh, 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 over a metallic process due to uh, increased turbulence of flow during uh, uh, opening of this valve but this is uh, might be uh, accepted to a limit if this uh, uh, stenotic uh, murmur uh, like ma like uh, ejection murmur over uh, aortic mechanical processes is associated with thrill or transmitted to the neck this means this is pathological this is not a flow murmur this is pathological one and should be uh, uh, better evaluated with uh, further investigation like echocardiography so to summarize uh, our lecture uh, as we said before general examination of cardiac patient uh, aiming to pick a cause or a result of cardiac problem starting from uh, a general look then circulating uh, starting from the hand head and neck leg abdomen and lung then local cardiac examination with palpation to uh, appreciate which chamber is enlarged and auscultation to get which valve is uh, affected and this is uh, a good website uh, where there is uh, many records of uh, different uh, heart murmurs this for uh, better uh, practice and finally thank you